Hi there again. Hi again. How are you? Good, good. Uh, yeah, we have to propose. Oh, we have Can to pose, I just smile? Right? Ready? Three, two, one. Have a good chat. Yeah. I, I usually talk second time to actors I've done before because I have more questions because you have time. So mm -hmm. I, for you, you have some questions. Uh, regarding Uzov, did you get a lot of people saying that he's too cowardly or he has a good moment? Do you, what do you think about him after playing him all, all these years? Oh, I think that Usopp is like the definition of courage because courage is being afraid, but doing what you got to do anyway, even though you are afraid. It's very easy for somebody who has all these superpowers to just jump into a fray and not be afraid, but he has nothing, yet he will do what he has to do to save his friends. Mm -hmm. That's an incredible amount of courage. Yeah. Like, uh, I see a lot of people like discussing that Usopp and Krillin like similar why do you yeah. think is it the similar between the two? Between but Usopp has a logo on nose, so that <laughs> he wins. There. Yeah, he wins Usopp, there. Usopp has a huge nose, and Krillin has no nose. Uh, mm -hmm. They're very similar in a lot of ways, except I think that Krillin is a little cooler than Usopp. You know, as, as far as like typically cool guy, you know, he's like uh, he's. I, I just don't see he's had a girlfriend and he got married and has kids, you know, it's, yeah. I just don't think Usopp would ever be cool enough to get a date, much less settle yeah. down with a woman, you know, even so, after the two uh, years, huh? even after the time skip, he looks like he could, you know, yeah. and he's a little yeah. bit cooler. Maybe I think that the Soga King, the Sniper King could probably get yeah, a date. So, Sniper King could get anything. Yeah, I think he could do it. Yeah, okay. Like, I have another question that I have. It's like, um, when they asked you to Bardock, how was your feeling like doing like someone serious? Because at first, I, I couldn't recognize that you were the same voice as Korean. Like, it oh, was thank like you. something really, because that's one thing that I had to give favor because many people think of you most like comic relief, but you can pull off really emotional people. Like, the two that comes to mind are Bardock and Koro Sensei before he was like the monster. Like, when he's yeah. like the, 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 the killer. He's like a certified gentleman. I can easily see like people like Jay, Micah doing to him instead of you. Yeah, like, well, you know, I the thing is, is when you get in, you get a big part in anime. People tend to cast you in that because that's the last thing they remember you doing. Um, but I was for 14 years before I worked at Funimation. I was a theater actor and I did a lot of serious roles. Oh, and really? I was actually kind of known for them. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I do have a very goofy side as well, and I love cartoons, especially the old Warner Brothers style. So yeah. when I got the chance to do cartoons, I tended to audition for those fun roles. But honestly, uh, yeah, I, I love doing serious stuff too. Um, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, no, because, like, uh, I do this thing, like, typecasting, like, the most of animation actors, and you are yeah. mostly, like, on, like, the goofy side. Even Dr. Stone... The most recent I play a lot of you, dads too. Yes, yeah, like like the favorite dad everyone that everyone misses, like Hughes. Hughes. Yes. Yeah. Everyone Colleen Clickenbeard was directing me in something. Uh, I think it was called it was Moon Phase, and I played this character Seiji, who was kind of a serious character too. And he had this fight scene, and she was like, "Oh my god, I didn't know you could do fight scenes." And I went, "I'm Krillin and Bardock. I can do fight scenes." And, and she was like, "All oh, right, I was just thinking about you as Hughes, you know." So they tend to think about you from the last big thing that you did. Mm. Okay, yeah, because I don't know most uh, like how you guys do like in the business because I'm not a voice actor. I just like, but I think very because I love seeing you guys behind the scenes doing the voice. I can see really you guys pulling off everything like an actor in a movie or a show. You guys pulling all your emotions, all your dedication. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's we do that for even the goofy parts though. I mean, if you think about Usopp, he has some pretty serious times. I, like I said in the panel, uh, I've no characters made me cry like Usopp has made me cry. That's as a huge One Piece fan, I take that as a comp as something I'll be remembered to my to my dad. Because yeah, because I always thought he was just kind of like uh, you know comic relief, and then all of a sudden he's just he's uh, humili he's expressing so many emotions at the same time. You know, anger, humiliation. Uh, frustration and it's just all coming on and, and and when I was doing it I was crying and I was like oh my god this character is like my fa favorite character now you know yeah and then I got uh, uh I got uh, Koro Sensei and that's I that became my favorite character after that because it just felt so 
me, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he's this. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot one last thing before it could be the last yeah. one. If Uzop met Koro and he said, I'm the greatest, like, God destroyer, I can destroy you. Do you think Koro would buy that? Or he, like, say, kids, ki or oh, kids, take him. I, I don't want to fight him. I don't know, because uh, Usopp is the king of liars. He could probably convince him. Yeah, but because that'll be funny. Like, everyone can see him as a lie except for the monster. Like, kids, take yeah. care of him. I don't want to fight him. Well, it was great talking to you Thanks. again, man. I hope meeting you in person one day and take a picture. Soon. Thanks so much. Bye. I'm be at the conventions.